Hey, hey, fellow YouTubers. Once again, just beautiful, sunny, warm weather for January. Hey, but that's uh, Southern California for you in the year 2020. So I saw one topic that I thought would be interesting for discussion, and that was um, when are you too old to ride a motorcycle? And you know, that's an extremely personal decision. And there is no, obviously is no right or wrong answer. But, um, so I think the worst case scenario is the individual that needs to ride, wants to ride, doesn't feel like he's too old, but comes down with one condition, could be arthritis, carpal tunnel, um, pulled hamstring, like I dealt with several times. That, that actually wipes out the option of writing. In most cases, you can deal with that even if it takes you an extended period of time, even if it takes you surgery, and if it's just one, one medical issue, you can usually address that and come back from that as long as you're not too old. So, that would be that would be terribly frustrating take someone that's maybe like 65 just retired um they've been riding for a lot of years but you know didn't have much time with raising a family work and whatnot and then they finally reach retirement and they got some medical issue it's just one issue it's the only thing he feels young enough mentally physically psychologically, emotionally, how, how, intellectually, however you might want to put it together. But then there's this one issue that just precludes being able to consider motorcycle riding as an option. So once again, usually you can address that one issue. So then obviously there's the individuals that have lost confidence in their skills or their abilities and have noticed that they're second guessing themselves a lot more they're having a lot more close calls and they're aware of it and they now are feeling that maybe it's wise that they don't ride so I think anytime you start to lose confidence you are not as good of a rider you're immediately putting yourself more in jeopardy as soon as that confidence starts to wane now i'm not talking about being you know so confident that you think you can drive you know on a 35 mile posted speed limit you could drive 65 and have no no injury or no um, possibility of accidents or injuries i'm just uh Okay, so we got those two situations. Now how about someone that wants to start riding, is never ridden, and is already in his 50s or 60s? You know, something that would help that individual is having at least um, a knowledge and a know-how of driving a car that has a stick shift. And most people in that age range, because I'm 53, just turned 53 recently, I, when I started driving as a 16-year-old, vast majority of cars came out with a stick shift. Um, automatic transition was considered, you know, something that you would find in luxury cars. So someone that's in their 50s or 60s, they usually will have a good understanding of driving a stick shift because that's kind of important in the shifting of a motorcycle. I don't know for how much longer, though. I mean, I think, um, you know, everything's just about ease and comfort these days. And you got the electric motorcycles that don't shift at all. And so I think you're going to end up um, having a lot more automatic even with the 
the um, combustion engine motorcycles relying on gasoline, you're still gonna, I think, have a lot more automatic transmissions coming out, or at least as an option. Um, because a lot of these youngsters, you know, they have no reason to ever have learned how to drive a stick shift in a car, so it doesn't translate well in their mind, you know, to have to do all this shifting and, and uh, all this clutch work and, you know, you got to learn how to do it before you lean into a churn and, you know, there's right time to do it, bad times to do it. Like I had this friend that got a beautiful, all silver Indian chief. I had my Vulcan Mean Streak. And um, <laughs> coming up to any stop sign or uh, red light, he would downshift, just plop it down in the first gear at like 20 miles an hour and pop that clutch. We'd be riding side by side and he would just go wah, wah, get pulled way back. And I mentioned it to him, but you know how a lot of people are sensitive about, about how they ride. But I, I said to him, you know, I, I don't almost ever downshift into first gear, you know, unless I'm just kind of cruising towards the red light at like 15, 20, you know, um, and, you know, I might want to pop it at five just to almost avoid using the brakes at all for that one light. But yeah, it's not a good idea to, to regularly downshift in the first to stop, I don't think. Usually just downshift in the second and then rely on the brakes from there. Anywho, um, so you, we, what did we cover? We covered the person that, um, you know, has confidence waning. We've covered the individual that has just one medical condition that has now stopped his ability to ride. Um, but then that you can usually cut, uh, overcome. We've covered the individual that thinks about getting into riding in their 50s or 60s. Oh, but I didn't really cover that one. So obviously, just like the teenager, he's got the knowledge of shifting most likely, just wants to start with a kind of a smaller bike, kind of a lighter bike. If he's thinking cruiser, maybe something like a Honda 250 Rebel. Um, you know, I, I would be tempted to recommend like nice older 500s that I love, like old BSAs, Triumphs, um, Nortons, things like that. That's like, you know, kind of a classic one cylinder, two cylinder, like the old Triumphs parallel twin. Um, but, you know, they're kind of heavy for what they are. And when you're new, I think the main thing that people are thinking about is light. But if you ride one of these brand new super light bikes that are pretty fast, you know, that can be kind of dangerous for a newbie as well because it feels so nimble. It could give you a false sense of security and it's so fast that, um, you know, you might not know that when you're really leaning into a churn and maybe there it's a brand new tire, there's a little bit of moistness, moistness down, you can't just fully open the throttle you know, depending on your lean angle, that could, um, you know, uh, cause you to lose traction with the back tire. Um, so little things, you know, that you just don't know, it's kind of better to drive something kind of slow. And so, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to drive like my first bike, a 76 Honda 550 Super Sport. It wasn't fast and it was kind of heavy. So you just kind of learn to just kind of be safe. I don't know. I'm sure there's people that could advise better on uh, first bikes, but I know it's kind of important to get something fairly small. Anything from a 250 to a 550, I think you're in pretty good standing. Uh, what other kind of age things is there? Obviously, vision is kind of important, but you can usually have your corrective lenses. Um, you know, just the body takes a little bit more of a beating you know, so if you're 40 and you're going out for a four hour ride versus 70 on a four hour ride, when you get home at 70 at four hour ride, you're gonna need a hot bath with some Epsom salt. If you're 40, you might get home after a four hour ride and, and feel like you wanna go to the gym. Um, also, depending on how used you are to doing that, I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of 70s that ride four hours a day on a motorcycle every day, their, their bodies are pretty used to that. So that's a different story. And there's some 40 year olds that never ride four hours a day. So if they rode four hours a day and they, they came home, they'd be pretty sore. 
So I'm talking about people that, you know, are doing it the same amount of time between the 40 year old and seven year old. So I guess now I'm just starting to ramble, but um, I think a lot of it has to do with the will and the desire of the individual and the age of his heart versus the age of his, um, his psychology, you know, how his psyche feels about how old he is. So a lot of it is just how young you're feeling. And I think a big way to do that is to uh, keep an active mind. Main ways to do that, I think, is um, just involve your mind with things every day, whether it be social media, newspaper, password puzzles. But then a huge aspect they say of that is the social interaction that keeps your mind young. And then with the body, you know, I go snowboarding with guys my age and um, the guys that are always able to go real fast and deal with accidents fairly well and um, and all that are guys that stay active regularly. Some of the other guys, you know, because they don't stay active, they're more heavy set, and then their joints aren't as used to being active. And so then that's a double whammy because when they do fall, they got more weight to hit and their joints aren't as used to being active. So just staying active is as long as you're someone that stays active you feel you have your skills you you ride regularly so you can keep your skills up um so i think you know i i've met a lot of guys in their 70s that still ride several times a week so that's my role model that's how i'd like to be and so i guess we got to stay in touch with the doctor keep our eye appointments even dental you know they say a lot of health issues are caused by poor dental care so just take good care of ourselves stay active and keep writing at least a few times a week to keep those skills up and i think that's the key to writing longevity Whew. <laughs> have a good day everyone hit like if you liked it um my subscribership's kind of staying the same so if you're new to this channel, hit subscribe. Or if you have been around this channel for a while, maybe hit share and share it with one or two friends. I appreciate it so much. Have a beautiful, wonderful day.